Hello and welcome to the Daily Bible Podcast with Trisha and Michelle. We're just two friends reading through the Bible chronologically and encouraging you to do the same. You can follow us on Instagram and Facebook, Daily Bible Podcast, or go to our website, dailybiblepodcast.net. We are going through the one-year chronological Bible, and we have links for that in our show notes and also at our website. Also, be sure to join us on Facebook. Just look for Daily Bible Podcast in the groups. Also, I have to say I'm thankful for every listener. Mm -hmm. So in today's reading, I found a verse for all of us on this journey. I just wanted to share even before we get to the explanations. (laughs) But Jeremiah 15, 16 said, when your words came, I ate them. And they were my joy and my heart's delight, for I bear your name, Lord God Almighty. And I found this quote in the EnduringWord.com that summarizes what we're doing here at the Daily Bible Podcast. Me, Michelle, and all of you, Jeremiah first found God's word, and it wasn't neglected or taken for granted. He ate God's word, taking it in like food for his soul. And then he regarded God's word as a joy and rejoicing of his heart. So as I was reading that, I'm like, that's mm, us. That's good. At the Daily Bible Podcast. Yeah. And I'm so thankful that we're finding and eating and rejoicing together. Yeah. Thank you for that bit of encouragement. Thanks for yeah. sharing that with us. Okay. So today we are reading Jeremiah 12, Jeremiah 13, 14, and 15. And we are learning all about Jeremiah. I feel like, I don't know that I can actually say I feel his emotions, but Jeremiah, it has been nicknamed for eons as the weeping prophet. Yeah. And I always was like, oh, okay, whatever. He probably cries a lot. You know, he probably <laughs> is, has some, some an emotional in person. He's an emotional person. But what, what we are seeing with Jeremiah is he feels the pain. He mm-hmm. feels the pain of the impending doom, but he also feels the pain from God of knowing what the Israelites are doing. And he he feels, he knows the suffering of what is to come. And today we find him questioning God. I love how the New King James phrases verse one of chapter of Jeremiah 12. Righteous are you, O Lord, when I plead with you, Yet let me talk with you about your judgments. So Jeremiah wanted to ask God a question, and he did so in an appropriate way. And we have seen some very inappropriate mm-hmm. ways of asking God questions and and approaching God, but Jeremiah does so in a very soft way. He's recognizing and he's submitting to God's righteousness. So we see a humble guy. He asks how long the land must mourn. Oh, how long, oh Lord, didn't David ask the same question? Like, I think if I remember correctly, David was like, oh Lord, how long? The people can't see the future. They don't know how long this trial is going to be. And Jeremiah is just like, oh, this is agonizing right now. How long is this going to last? And God's answer to Jeremiah was both powerful and profound. If racing against mere men makes you tired, how will you race against horses? If you stumble and fall on the ground, what will you do in the thickets near the Jordan? Even your brothers, members of your own family have turned against you. They plot and raise complaints against you. So without directly answering the question, God has encouraged encouraging Jeremiah to regard his present challenge as a preparation for greater challenges Mm. to come. And then God has a message for Israel's neighbors. Yes, he will allow them to take Israel to win the battle, and it might seem like they've won the war, but he will return his people to their rightful land, land. The promise of exile and judgment was sure, but so was the promise of compassion and return. And Jeremiah did not despair at the seeming prosperity of the wicked and the trouble of the righteous, because God would move all Mm. things according to his perfect plan. And this chapter seems to be the, the next chapter seems to be the And the next chapter seems to be a compilation of several signs and prophetic words given to Jeremiah at different times. First, we see the sign of the linen sash, the sash that God asked Jeremiah to wear. A linen sash was associated with priestly garments. Mm -hmm. And 
Um, and such a linen sash was a sign of dignity and nobility. So Jeremiah is wearing the sash that God asked him to wear. And then God asks Jeremiah to take the sash to the Euphrates River and hide it. Then Jeremiah was asked to return and get the sash. And the sash was ruined. It was good for nothing. The sash had deteriorated in the dirt and the moisture. It still existed, but it was ruined and good for nothing. Charles Spurgeon said, of this, Charles Spurgeon said, whereas plain words might not have been noticed, this little piece of acting commanded the attention and excited the curiosity of the people. Blame us not if we sometimes dramatize the truth. We must win men's hearts. And to do so, we dare even run the risk of being theatrical. And we saw that. We saw that yeah. here. And then there was the bottles filled with wine. And there is this proverbial phrase that had that made sense to the Israelites back then. Even everything will fulfill its purpose. And so a bottle, even though it's a clay jar, it did, was not probably not a glass bottle, was meant to contain wine. So to say every bottle shall be filled with wine has another way to say everything shall fulfill its purpose. And instead of fulfilling their purpose before God in a high and noble way, God's rebellious people would be filled with mm. stupor and stupidity if they had fatal, if they had if they had a fatal if they had a fatal confidence in their destiny as the people of God the lord would break it jeremiah is saying to stop being proud and listen to god's warnings listen because the lord will act and he will scatter you he will expose your shame and sorrow awaits <sighs> jeremiah jeremiah has to like do the sash and put on the sash and bury the sash and get, just wonder if like this crowd was just like following him and watching all these things were they mocking him were they and truly listening eyes. yeah i don't know poor guy jeremiah 14 describes a severe drought in judah and it symbolizes the spiritual drought in the land due to the people's unfaithfulness and it has caused devastation um, you know, crops fail and animals suffer and the people of judah mourn and pray for relief but the lord tells Jeremiah not to pray for them because he will not listen. He said their sins have led to this calamity. So the false prophets provide the people with hope. They said there'll be peace and there'll be no famine. But God denounces these false promises. He's like, they don't even listen to me. They're, 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 whatever they're saying, they're not getting it from me. So Jeremiah pleads for mercy and God reaffirms his judgment and the coming of an invasion of a hostile nation. And then in chapter 15, God asserts his judgment, declaring even the intercession of righteous people like Moses and Samuel would not prevent the punishment. The people will face the sword, starvation, mm -hmm. captivity. And so Jeremiah lament, laments his faith, expressing sorrow for his birth since he must deliver such a hard message. God reassures Jeremiah, telling them that if he returns, God will restore him. And Jeremiah 15, 19 says, Therefore, this is what the Lord says. If you repent, I will re restore you that you may serve me. If you utter worthy, not worth worthless words, you will be my spokesperson. Let this people return to you. But let me say that again. If you utter worthy, not worthless words, you will be my spokesperson. Let this people turn to you, but you must not turn to them. So even the Lord was saying, you need to, you need to repent from all this not wanting to deliver these messages so even jeremiah the lord's like turn to me be my spokesperson he promises to make jeremiah a fortified wall and though the people fight against him they will not prevail you know these stubborn stiff-necked people God is giving them so many chances. Yeah. So many chances. I can't even keep count. Like we should have started tallying from the very beginning of the prophets. I mean, again, God says, if you repent, mm -hmm. I will restore you. Yeah. Like if you repent, I will restore you. Like even now, if you repent. And he gave them so many chances and and they didn't listen. Mm -hmm. And, and yeah, to be, to be his prophet 
to be a prophet sharing this had to have been so hard when yeah. no one, no one was listening to him. Well, there might have been a few, but because we know there's a remnant, but no one was listening mm-hmm. to him on on the bigger scale. <sighs> it's rough. okay well it's so rough we need to take a break and we need to hear from our sponsor and we'll be back with the word of the day stay tuned okay so the word of the day is destined and destined is to decree beforehand predetermine to designate a sign or dedicate in advance to direct, devise, or set apart for a specific purpose or place. So think about destined as we think about like, I don't know, the entire Old Testament, but (laughs) specifically, specifically what we've been reading through Mm -hmm. the last week or so. So when God talks about Jer- uh, when God talks about Judah's inevitable doom, he says in Jeremiah 15:2, "These who are destined for death to death, those who are destined for war to war, those who are destined for famine to famine, those who are destined for captivity to captivity." And I just kept thinking this whole, like, while I was reading through that verse, like, that is a really sad destined. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like, that is such a harsh destined. But my mind also went back to the Davidic promise mm-hmm. and how God gave David such an incredible promise. And I think our word of the day was wasn't it dynasty or destiny or yeah. something yeah. back then? And and there was such hope that was going to come out of David's line, such incredible hope. And it's not that the hope is gone because God keeps painting this small little picture, the small little ray of hope as he paints these harsh, mm-hmm. harsh tones in here. But destined, like just think about the Israelites. They were destined to death to war to famine to captivity because they kept ignoring god kept ignoring god but as i thought about the davidic promise my mind also went to the new testament and just realizing that because of christ because of the blood of christ we can be destined Mm. to heaven and spend eternity with god those who turn from their wicked ways. And just like we talked about before the break, God gave them so many chances to repent. Just repent now, repent now, and I will restore you. Well, Christ is saying, just turn from your ways, confess your sins, believe in me Mm -hmm. as Lord and savior of your life. And you are destined to be mine forever. Like there can be the really sad sad Dustin that we saw today, or there could be the beautiful, bright Dustin that we know and we have the hope because there's still hope. God's, like I said before, God is still painting this little string of hope. Mm -hmm. And there's still this weaving of this beautiful yarn in there. But Dustin today was kind of harsh, but there is, there is hope. There is hope. There always is hope. Yeah. And I love that you know, talk about the destined, like, it's really just that decision, <laughs> like mm-hmm. the decision to turn to God. And we've seen wicked kings turn to God and God's like, I will rescue you. <laughs> like, it's just that moment decision. And sometimes there's that battle raging where we don't want to submit to God. We don't want to turn over to him. But when we make that decision, mm-hmm. everything changes. Our, our destiny, our dynasty, everything changes. And there's so much heaviness in today's reading. And Jeremiah is so discouraged. And we all face spiritual drought in times. It talks about that drought. They were, you know, the false prophets were like, oh, there'll be no drought. Well, there is a drought and there's a spiritual drought and there's times of dryness. Um, and I think each of us have those times when our spiritual wells have dr- run dry. It's just the hard, hard stuff of life, but our destiny is not sealed. Like we can turn to our God who is the living waters. We can ask him to quench our thirst, to seek him. Jesus says, I am 
the living water. Anyone who is thirsty, come to me. Um, and Jeremiah's laments are not just the cries of the prophet, but they're the cries of every heart that mm -hmm. yearns to understand God's way. So when we feel mm -hmm. confused or misunderstood in your walk with God, he felt confused. He's like speaking and no one is paying attention. Know this, that our destiny is not determined by our doubts, but our determination to trust God. Yeah. So our destiny is not determined by our doubts, but our determination to trust God, even when the path seems unclear. So Jeremiah was prophesying all these things, but still it's like, oh, when is this going to happen? So when we feel spiritual drought, what do we do? We need to turn to God's word. We're drinking from living water. God's word is that living water. And that's what we're doing every day as we sit down. Um, we need to allow God to reshape us when we feel ruined and be there and help us on our paths. So we can, like and we were just talking about that moment decision to do things our way or to let God guide us. And when we obey in obedience, we discovered truly, like you're saying, Michelle, what we were destined for. As we seek and follow God, he can turn ordinary days into this extraordinary destiny. And it just takes those moments when we're like, I am tired. I am weary. I need you. Like, I need your spiritual water. I need to follow you. And at any time, I mean, that's why they kept sending, God's kept sending prophets because at any time they could have turned and they could mm -hmm. have repented. And we may not see now how our lives will change or how our destiny would change. We think, okay, I see a little change in me, but we have no idea. And it makes me think of, you know, caring for my grandma who's 93, she's bedridden, um, but she has an extraordinary destiny. Her love for God has passed on you know, my mom and myself and my brother and other family members, like the, our, my kids, it's, it's like the love that she has for God has passed on. It's just those little daily decisions where she turned to God. Um, she has this wonderful destiny. She mm -hmm. watched cowboy movies and she sings to Jesus. That's all she does <laughs> right now. And she still has this wonderful destiny because she believes in Jesus. And I think we just have to make that decision and realize like I am heading the wrong way. Jesus, I need you. I need your living water. And then everything changes. Mm -hmm. Well, and remember, part of the definition of destined is set apart for a specific purpose mm. or place. And, and just think about grandma and how she has been set apart for who she is and the mm -hmm. influence she has in your life and how you have been set apart for the influence in her life now and taking yeah. care of her in these, in these hard days, because mm -hmm. it's not easy. And, and so you were destined for this. You are destined for other things. You've been destined for other things, but you're destined for this particular purpose and, and showing Christ's love to her during this time. And it's a very beautiful thing. Yeah. And, and sometimes we think like our destiny has to be this big thing. You know, sometimes people are like, how do you do all you do? Like the kids and podcasts and writing. I'm like, well, I have a praying grandma in the next room and she mm -hmm. prays for us and I, she prays over her family. She can't even remember all their names right now, but she still prays. And that makes all the difference. That changes our destinies to have a praying grandma that's caring yeah. for us. A lot, a lot of um, good is coming when she can't mm -hmm. do anything but pray. She's mm -hmm. still, she's praying. That's important. Mm -hmm. Well, speaking of prayer, would you pray for us today? Yeah. Dear Heavenly Father, um, this descent is a hard word if we are turned against you, if our hearts are turned against you, Lord, because then you say we are destined for destruction, destined um, to be separated from you, destined to be have, you know, have be in a drought. We are destined for so much when we don't have you. But Lord, when we just say, I need you, I need your living water, I need to follow you, I love you, then it just opens up and we are destined for good. And I thank you, Lord, that just that decision can change everything in our lives. And I thank you that when we seek you, whether we are seeking you in our actions and words or just seeking you by praying wherever we are, um, that you can, you can bring good into our lives. I thank you for your son that gave us that eternal uh, destiny and the eternal dynasty when we turn to him. And we just thank you for that. In your name we pray. Amen. 
Amen. Well, we are sending you off with some daily encouragement to get into the Word and be the hands and feet of Jesus. Again, if you don't have the one-year chronological Bible that we are using, we have links to that Bible in our show notes. You can even find it in the Kindle format. Also in the show notes is a monthly and yearly schedule of the Bible reading plan that we are following. Tomorrow, we are reading Jeremiah 16, 17, 18, and then jumping to Jeremiah 35. And I want to take a second here to thank the team at Life Audio. You wouldn't be listening to Daily Bible Podcasts with Trisha and Michelle without their partnership and without their help. Daily without their help. Go to lifeaudio.com. You're going to find other great Christian podcasts that are going to encourage you in your walk with God today. And we will see you here tomorrow. Bye-bye.